slides left, technically three that actually have work on them. We were getting into finding the domain and the range of functions based off of the equations. We practiced five examples, and I told you that there's only two functions that you have to actually stop and think about that are going to generate No, wait, it didn't crash. Oh, good, okay. There's two functions that you have to actually think, <laughs> think about and to generate specific like domain restrictions. And that's if it's a fraction, those are both fractions, or if it's a square root. The other types of functions you should be just fine to say it's all real numbers because there's no restriction on what number you can plug in there. You can plug a number in and get a number out, that means that you're good to go. It's when you plug a number in and you get a problem. And the only problems are no-go in fractions, zero on bottom, or a <coughs> negative under a radical if it's a square root. Um, so that's what we did yesterday. Now what we're going to do is, what I find to be easier, the exact same thing, but this time I'm giving you the graph. So instead of me giving you the function and you have to actually think to yourself, oh crap, are there restrictions here? This time I'm going to give you the graph and you're literally reading the graph to see what is the uh, domain covered and what's the range that's covered. Um, you're going to have to visualize and I'm going to use a highlighter here. I don't know if you want to, if you want a highlighter, I have some. If you want to borrow, you may want one. I'll toss them to you. Ready? Anyone else? Yep. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone else? All right. So if you have a highlighter, this might help. Um, remember, Domain is simply stating what x values are covered, right? And then range is stating what y values are covered. We cannot sit here and write the list of all the x values covered and all the y values covered because if you go back to that one day when I demonstrated to you, between any two given points, there's another point. And then between those two, there's another. And between those two, there's another. To the point where you can't even locate them all because there's just that many. There's infinitely many points on that curve. So instead of sitting here trying to write the list, because you can't do that, we're going to use what's called interval notation to simply say that all of the x values on this graph will, will fall from, and in this case, it's negative infinity to infinity. Do you know what graph this is? Parabola. It is a parabola, which is called a what? What's the cube? This is a quadratic. It really helps if you know your graphs. Because a quadratic either opens up or opens down, but in both cases, it's getting what? As it's going up or down. It's getting wider. So you have to visualize to yourself kind of like it's like the end game. The arrows are going down, but they're also it's also spreading out. So this is eventually going to cover the entire x-axis. The entire x-axis will be covered by that graph. You pick a number, you plug it in, you'll get an answer. Well, the range actually has a specific cutoff, so it's very important. Um, so the domain is negative infinity to infinity, and I think I put this on your paper. Yeah, it's on there. So the domain is negative infinity to infinity. Now I'm changing colors. If you have a neighbor with a different color highlighter, maybe swap with them. Or I have, I have four. Ready? Catch. I just don't want to hear it. Oh. Anyone need a different color? All right. 
So we're switching colors for the range. The range is now the same concept but the y-axis. I want you to turn your head sideways. Try not to block your view. Turn your head sideways and I want you to think about like if you were to scan the y-axis, you know, at negative 5, oh, it hits here and here. At negative 3, it hits here and here. At negative 1, it hits here and here. Don't highlight those. At 1, it hits here and here. So you're, you're scanning the graph to see where all does the y-axis get covered. Would you agree that it is covered all the way to negative infinity? Because it's going down. Okay. And would you agree that it is going to stop right there at 4? Okay, so the range, which by the way is always written least to greatest, would be negative infinity to 4 with a bracket on the 4 because it is touching the 4. If I was to actually list or label this coordinate point, it would be 1 comma 4. So is 4 in the range? Yes. Which is why there is a, hard to see now, which is why there is a bracket right there. Now let's go to a graph that's not necessarily um, like a specific function. This is called a piecewise graph. Pieces put together still um, makes the function passes the vertical line test, right? Okay, so domain. We're going back to the other color. If you will, think of the graph collapsing down to the x-axis and then think of what's covered, okay? So if this graph was to collapse straight down like a magnetic force, pull it to the x-axis. If you visualize it, what's covered? should be in the highlighter, sorry. It's covering, this comes straight down negative four, and it's covering up to three, but I need to be careful on the three and put a what? I need to put a parentheses. Like this one right here is negative four, five. This point here is three, two, and it's clearly open. So when I go to write the domain, I'm going to write bracket negative four parentheses on the three. For the range, turn your head sideways, look at the y-axis and visualize like a magnetic force pushing it in to the y-axis, and then you can see, okay, so my lowest y value is, is 2, and my highest y value is 5, but I don't actually touch the 2, so I need to put parentheses on the 2. So this is your range, and I'm going to write over it. And it's actually parentheses 2, 2, 5, with a bracket on the 5. You need to remember to write least to greatest. And watch your open or closed circles if you have some type of like tricky graph. That was not tricky because that's just a plain old quadratic. This is tricky because it's a piecewise function. So you have to pay attention to the circles. Pay attention to the circles um, as to whether they're open or closed. You're, you're just creating an interval. You're saying that if I sat down and I listed every single point on this graph, if I listed every single one of them, right, in a T-chart, if I listed them all, my X numbers would only go from a negative 4 to a 3, the three's an open circle, my y numbers would go from a two to a five. Does that make sense? You're, you're telling 
hate to say the word range because range is just y coordinate. But you're saying the interval. You're saying all the x numbers have range. Run. There we go. All the x numbers run from negative 4 to 3. All the y numbers run from uh, 2 to 5 on this graph. Okay. Now let's go to practice this. linear, there's no restrictions. Any number you pick, you can plug it into that equation, you will get an answer. Because you do get an answer, that means that it, you're good to go. It means it's in the domain of the function, no restrictions. Nothing to be careful about there. Let's look at B. Do we have anything to be careful about here? Yep. This is one of those red flags. <coughs> you have to be careful. So if you graph it and you look at the picture, you should see that it is not expanding out in both directions. So there's your indication there's a restriction here. What I want you to prompt your mind when you're doing this on your own is to think to yourself, this is a square root. And then from there, I want you to think, what's the rule in math for square roots? No 
negative. So I'm going to say radican cannot be negative. Now since it cannot be negative, and this is where a lot of people tend to forget, like they know that it can't be negative, but they don't realize, they don't remember what am I supposed to set it equal to or whatever to solve. Use that to tell you what you set it up against. If it cannot be negative, visualize the number line. Cannot be negative, so it can be positive or zero. So you take the radican and you set it greater than or equal to zero. Because that <coughs> implies we got to say zero or positive. Then you solve that. So subtract four. Okay, so the domain restriction is I can plug any number in as long as it's higher than or equal to negative four. What does that look like in interval notation? Say it again. Negative four bracket cannot have infinity. Yes. So that means visualize the number line if you need to. At negative four, it would be closed and it's going this way. And that's infinity. So the domain the domain is bracket on negative four to infinity. Now here's where you may need to look at the graph in your calculator to figure out the range. Turn your head sideways. Imagine like a, an accordion closing in, collapsing the graph to the y-axis. You want to know what's the smallest to the largest. So what's the smallest value? Does it say zero? Well, plug, plug your restriction in to get your smallest value. Plug negative 4 in. You get the square root of 0, and that is zero. So yes, it touches zero. And it's going in what direction? As it's going, it's going up. So the range would be bracket on zero to infinity and beyond. So if you can't tell by looking at the calculator, plug your, your minimum um, domain value in and then that will give you the y value or you can go to table and you can see if you plug negative 4 in yes you do get 0 so if you get an answer it's in there it's good to go um, what about C what is that <coughs> that is a cubic and that means what That means that there are no restrictions, so it's negative infinity to positive infinity. You can plug whatever you want in there. Because it's a cubic, you're going to get an answer. You're going to get an answer, and that means it's allowed. Um, when it's degree 3, it's called a cubic function. Because it's degree three right here, this means cube. Uh, we're gonna hop, skip, and jump around. Go to E. Let's see. What about E? Well, are there restrictions? No. It's degree four. It's called a quartic. Um, that means that because it's an even exponent, now they're, we're talking about the range. When we get to the range, you're going to have to look at the graph. If you think about a parabola, right? If a parabola is sitting right here, the domain is what? All real numbers. Yes? You agree? Okay, but the range, turn your head sideways, the range would be starting here and going in what direction? Up. So we may need to um, 
then the like the, the functions that you have to stop and think about. If it's an even polynomial, even degree polynomial, that means that the end behavior is the same. If you look right here at this, um, the even degree polynomials even degree polynomials are like quadratics they're both up or they're both down which means there's if they're both up there's a bottom out and if they're both down then there's a max so you do need to check yourself. Domain is all real numbers. There's no restrictions on domain. You don't have anything fancy to do. The only two you have to stop and actually find the domain are square roots or fractions. Range is where you have to look at the calculator. So if I graph this, x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus three, and I'm just gonna hit zoom six. Was it, was it squared? Thank you. If you don't type it in right, you're gonna get it wrong. Zoom six. Okay, so do you see how it's going out, right? So it's gonna cover the entire x-axis, but it definitely has a bottom, it, it's bottoming out. So when I list the range, in this case, if I read it like a book, I have nothing, 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 and then all of a sudden I have y values here, and it's going to go to infinity. So let's write this on our paper. I'm going to go to the table so you can see that. Let's make a note. Okay, we have even degree polynomials. We're going to make a note. Check the range. In the calculator. Check the range in the calculator, which, which means check the graph. Graph it, zoom six it, look at it, and you're going to have to check it. So the domain for this graph, we've already said, the domain for this graph is all real numbers. The range ways to do this. You can go to the table or you can use the calculator feature. Second calc, we did this, I don't remember, I think it was 1-1. One, one. Second calc, it has a minimum value. You can tell that this is symmetrical so it doesn't matter which one you shoot to find. Since I'm already left bound of this right here, I'm already to the left of it, I'm going to go with that one. So I'm left bound, now I'm right bound, and now I'm going to guess right there. And then you can see the lowest y value is negative 4. So the range is it's going to start at negative 4 and shoot up. If you need to add an extra note for range, we did um, second calc and I'm going to write max slash min because if it's opening down you need to stay you need to push the max option if it's opening up you need to push the min now let's go to one you should be comfortable with go to D and try it you should be able to do D
If you state that it's a fraction, um, or the fancy word is rational, which means the denominator cannot be what? <coughs> it absolutely cannot equal zero. Because it cannot equal a single value, there are just specific restrictions. Up here, when it couldn't be a negative, that's why there's an entire list of restrictions. That's why that one's an inequality. This is just saying, hey, this number's off limits. This one's saying, hey, you have to get pick from that side of the number line. Okay, so you set the denominator equal to zero, you solve it, and then that is your restriction. Imagine a number line shaded with an open circle on two. Got your negative, the positive. So the domain domain is negative infinity to 2, popping over 2, and going to infinity. Let me show you this graph in the calculator. This is where you would be checking it. Alright, I'm going to do um, an alpha by equals 1 over x minus Yes. 
how you read those points? Okay, and do you see right here where it says this? Okay, do you notice that the y value here is negative, the y value here is positive, what's in between crossing from negative to positive, what value? Zero. Did they list zero? No, they said error, which means it's not touching zero on the y, like the y coordinate is not touching zero. It's getting to it, but it's not actually touching it. So we have to list the range and we have to show that it's hop, skip, and jumping over zero. And the way you find that is by looking in the table for where there's an error. And then because these are rational, we're gonna we are gonna deal with these easy ones. We're not gonna deal with where it's been like over, you know, shitting it up right and twisted and then reflected. So this is a matter of do you remember us going over this question? It's hop, skipping, and jumping right over zero. And you verify that. I'm running out of room. You might want to make a note on your paper. You're gonna to go to your calculator table to check that. You can look at the graph and speculate, but then check it in the table. It's just like when I popped the graph up and you immediately said, is it touching zero? So, uh, undefined and error, the same thing. Okay, so They're one and the same. Question. Same setup, approach, technique. What cannot be sorry, what cannot be negative? Wait, no, I might have sometimes the thing disappears. Hold on. No, we're good. We're good. Um, I don't know why sometimes the little widget down there does in the background. Huh? Yes, so this is just like B. This is going to get crowded, y'all. This one, this is a humdinger. This is college level. So you got to stay with me. A lot of the difference of this class from Algebra 2 is leveling up on the types of problems we have. Okay? Um, it's the same stuff from Algebra 2 in some senses. It's just I'm throwing harder problems at you because we're college level. So, hang with me, okay? Do not give up. That right there is the exact same approach and technique. This is a square root. doesn't matter what's underneath. That's a square root. The radicand cannot be negative, which means I need to pull it out and force it to greater than or equal to zero and solve. So, pull the radicand out. And we're going to force it greater than or equal to zero. And now you have to solve that. Because there is a square on a binomial, this is going to become a polynomial of degree two, and it will factor. Oh, no. There it is. Um, yes. You will foil it out first, then combine terms, and you will factor to get your answer. So, I would not distribute the negative until the until you're done foiling. So try it on your own. I'm going to work with the answer up here. I'm going to try and block the answer because I don't want you to look up and say, "Oh yeah, that's how I I would do it too." I want you to try it on your own. Simplify the binomial first, then distribute the negative, then combine like terms, then factor it. Negative before. 
before you went to four. All I've done is foil and distribute the negative and combine like terms. I've not done the next part. So check it and see if we're at the same spot. I did um, first outer inner last. Then I combined those two to give me that. Then I distributed the negative. Then I said 4 minus 9 is negative 5. Now, the next part is um, a house cleaning technique, okay? What do you notice about every single polynomial we factored so far about your leading coefficient? It's always been positive, right? And this one's mm -hmm. negative, so that's a problem. So this is a house cleaning technique that you have to, this is the leveling up part, like you've got to look at that and say, okay, I don't want to factor that because the leading term's negative and that's not, that's not, it's going to cause problems. So what you can say to yourself is, if I divide the entire thing by a negative, then this will become a positive and I can factor it like normal. There's something from middle school that you have to remember though. If you take a negative number, to the other side of an inequality by multiplication or division, what do you have to do? You have to flip the sign. Because it's a reflection over the axis of symmetry, and that's why the sign flips. Like if you take a negative through multiplication or division to the other side of an inequality, you have to take the sign and flip it. It's a mirror image. Please? Because I distributed the negative. There's a negative one right there, and I multiplied it by everything. Oh, it's just a four minus one negative four. Yeah. Congratulations. So I'm going to change color so you can see what I'm doing here. You can either divide everything or you can multiply. Because what are we what's the number? One. So level up here. If I multiply by one, or if I divide by one, there's a the same thing. Yes, she's on the way. Thank you. So I will multiply everything by negative one, which is going to give me this nice positive leading term. All the signs change, and then I'm going to write right here in big bold letters. Watch out. That's a difference of squares. No, no. This is a this is a perfect square, meaning it's the same thing times itself. A difference of squares is when the signs are different. Oh, I I'm sure you would be the power of two for other squares. Yeah, you can't do that. It's a binomial. Yeah, you can't do that. Um, because this is just attached right here by subtraction. It's not a four coefficient in the parentheses. Like there's a term here and there's a minus one term here. So the minus one term, actually it was right here. The minus one term distributes and then the four just keeps coming down and then now that's four minus nine. It 
It's only when it's negative. Only. What do you mean by the positive? Like a positive or to the other side, which I wouldn't. But if yeah. Just like, if it was like that, and it said it was before, can you not just bring it out so I can see it like at the end where we run back there? Like you can. Outside? You can. Um, I did that one year, and I think people were going to throw their shoes at me. So, But yes, you can. In fact, I think there is one single problem this semester where we do, um, I, I do suggest that technique because there's so much right. That's when we get to problems that are a whole page long. Um, it's all right, y'all got this. It's good. The homework? You know, like, is it going to be wrong with that? Like the homework? Well, if, yeah, if it's in class, it can be wrong. Yeah. All right. This is going to be easier to factor than what was up here, okay? Um, so now you're back in your normal routine of A times C, factors of 5 that add up to negative 6. It's pretty, so we can go straight to parentheses. This is because A is what? I, I, I can't say it enough. Like, it's you can only do this when A is 1. I know y'all get tired of hearing me say it, but I'm tired of people trying to do it. When, What are the factors of 5 that add up to negative 6? Negative 5 and negative, negative 1? Yeah. It's okay. And then now, just like you're used to, you, you just say to yourself, okay, so what numbers um, would make this a 0? What number would make this a 0? Because that's where you're finding like the, 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 um, the value, the critical values. So what would come out of this to make it a zero, a five, and what would come out of that one, a one? So from these, we found x equals five and x equals one, and this is what I meant by there's a lot of writing here. It did not tell us to solve. It said, what's the domain? So don't lose track of what you were trying to do. The goal was to get some type of interval notation on domain and range. You just found the domain, right? The domain, if you look at, let me show you this graph. And I may need to pull the one from that keeps pop from what y'all. Anyway, I may need to pull the one from here. Let's see. So most of the time we find it in the domain is what we just got. We calculated. Yeah. Let me pull. When you do problems like this on your My Math Lab homework, they're going to give you the option to blow the graph up um, so you can see the values. You don't have to find the window on the My Math Lab widget. Does that make sense? On your personal graphing calculator, you have to find a nice viewing window. On the My Math Lab, they always give it to you right where the graph is. You just have to blow the graph up with that little button so you can see it. So this graph looks really funky. If I'd have thrown this up there the whole time, you would have known exactly what the answer was. I didn't want to do that. I wanted you to walk, walk through the algebra real quick. If I just give you the graph, can you now state the domain? What's it running from to, to what? It's running from 1 to 5. And are they open or closed? They're closed. So my domain is please excuse the interruption at this time we need the following students and the to report range. to the main office mm -hmm. that's going on the UT yeah. field trip today the students are as follows yeah. Alana Barton to McLean Donovan to Haley Dima right. Jack Gother Andy Lay Lucia McCarver Kate Melvin Abby Palmer Mason Perry Raleigh Cole the last slide was just um, a word problem, and it's just plugging the numbers in the calculator. Put it over there so the kids can get to it. Wait, is the last slide a word problem? Yeah. That, that's a word problem where you just
just plug the numbers in that they tell you. You're plugging in the degrees.
you're gonna feel it and it's gonna freak you out. But you're you're gonna feel it sway just a little, just enough. If you ever been on the second story of a mall and you've been walking, you'll feel the yeah. Um you can feel that in your feet. Like if can you? Yeah, if you're in the second floor and like down there or up here. Yeah, it's like it's like a floor so you'll feel it more promptly. Yeah. There's a rule in science, if it does not bend, it will break. Mm -hmm. Like the... And you need a phone call. Yeah, and I bet it's, why are y'all not down there, but you're marked to prison. Hello? Hello? Hey. Is it Paige, uh, Gracie, and Adeline? Yeah, they're in here. They said they don't want to go um, because they've got some friends who aren't going to go. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay, last chance. Do you want to go? They're holding the bus just for y'all. Like, the bus is trying to pull out of the driveway. Man, why are you? Thank you. You can't? Okay. No, they said they don't want to. They are, no, wait, I don't have Emus. I have Melton and I have Gracie. Yeah. You're welcome. Bye. Y'all gonna get me? I'm scared. All right. Someone snitched me. They're like, they're here. Um, 14, 20 foot long. Uh, okay, so function of change in temperature. They're letting you know T stands for temperature in degrees Celsius from winter to summer. Here's the big thing about word problems. When they give you a function for something to do with the word problem, all you have to know is that's the function. What's it asking me to do? It's either asking you to plug something in or it's asking you like to look at the graph and find a specific value. Find the linear expansion of the steel center span when the temperature goes from 30 degrees, it's 42, it's 50, it's 56, of course it's saying Celsius, that doesn't even matter. This is saying, plug it in. They're telling you L stands for the linear expansion, capital L. T stands for the temperature at that specific time. Here are specific temperatures. What is L? Plug it in. All it is. Now, because you do have four values, it would be faster here. This is where you think smarter, not harder. It would be faster to go to y equals. I can't read it. To go, go to y equals and type the function in y equals because then you can go to table and find those values and then all your answers right there. If you don't want to do that, then just go to the home screen and type that mess every time and then type the numbers. You can type how many do you want to see? Four, one, three, times 14, 20, and then times the first degree was 30. You can type it here and write it if you want, or you can type it in um, Y equals. I think I got, I wrote, I just wrote the decimal all the way out. I didn't round. So 0.5538 meters. You might think that number feels weird, right? That feels like the answer's wrong. Wrap your mind around what, what it's talking about. You've got a big giant bridge, yes? And we're talking about the swaying of the bridge that cars are driving across. And we're in meters. And this came out to be half a meter. So does it make sense that, like, what if it came out to be 45? <laughs> if you think, if you wrap your mind around like a bridge is swaying 45 meters, you know, that doesn't make sense. That's not logical. The bridge only moves just a little bit. So the, the answer coming out to be 0.5 makes perfect sense. Like it's only going to sway about half a meter when the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. Um, so use that as a checkpoint too with word problems.
problem. It's like, ask yourself, what am I looking at? What's, what's my answer in the context of the problem? Does it make sense? So you're just writing this, that L of 30 plus 0.55. You need to know how to get it. You might want to make a note that you just type it in your calculator. 38 meters. Repeat. Find L of 42, L of 50, and L of 56. And once you find those, you're done with these notes, and then you can go to the 1 2 homework in my math lab. You will be due by 1 p.m. tomorrow. If you have any questions, you know, let me know, message me. There's no flex today, um, but there's flex tomorrow, so if you're having trouble, come to my flex tomorrow.